So now we're going to continue our discussion of hormonal growth regulation, and we're just entitled the flowchart just that, but just the second part and final part of this topic, uh, Roman numeral two. So here now what we're going to be doing is putting our knowledge of hormone growth hormone specifically into context, into real life scenarios of let's say uh, problems with growth hormone. And those problems can be exemplified by either the hyposecretion or the hypersecretion of growth hormone. So let's take a look at both situations and what that gives us in terms of real life human context. So let's imagine we have a situation of hypo, that means less, much less secretion of growth hormone, let's say, and that's going to be specifically during childhood. Because childhood is a time at which you need a good amount of growth hormone being secreted. And if you have a hyposecretion of growth hormone during a time when you need growth hormone to be secreted at a pretty high level, you're going to have downstream effects. And those downstream effects will be sort of exemplified by the idea that this person will be uh, fall, sort of fall under the idea of pituitary dwarfism. It results in pituitary dwarfism. Hyposecretion of GH during childhood creates pituitary dwarfism. Why is it pituitary? Well, that's because GH is produced and secreted by the pituitary. And what does dwarfism mean? Dwarfism simply means that this person will eventually end up being smaller than normal. Even though they're smaller than normal, they will be correctly proportioned, meaning that though their stature is smaller than normal, their arms are proportioned correctly to that stature and any other, let's say, section of them is proportioned correctly. We'll see a situation when this does not happen. That's why we're mentioning it. And also, these people typically have a normal intelligence level, even though this is affecting their brain. It's only affecting a part of their brain involved in some sort of growth, and thus their brain in terms of intelligence will be okay. So the term, the uh, context that we have for hyposecretion of GH would be called pituitary dwarfism. So now, question is, uh, what is the treatment? How do we solve this problem? Can we solve this problem? The treatment is the following, and it's very specific. What has to happen is that there needs to be a diagnosis. You must be diagnosed to be four it's too late, before puberty, essentially. What does this mean? Why puberty? Puberty is a time in which you have the most, the highest release of growth hormone in your life cycle. And that's going to be the time in which all of your cells are going to be the most receptive to growth hormone. But let's say that you do not have enough growth hormone. You have a hyposecretion. If this is known before puberty, we can, in terms of treatment, prepare for that by inducing and produce and giving the person enough growth hormone to combat the hyposecretion. But let's say it's after puberty. That would mean that cells aren't as receptive. That would mean that there isn't just as much of a window for growth hormone to be effective because the receptors aren't there, so the cells cannot act on that growth hormone. For that reason, this has to be done before puberty. So, let's say we know that somebody has this pituitary dwarfism, what are we going to do? Options are the following. We can possibly get growth hormone from a cadaver's pituitary. So that a cadaver is simply an a individual who has already passed, who has already died, but as anatomically speaking, their structures are still intact. They are still relatively okay in terms of, let's say, we can excavate them or use the stuff that's within them as tissue, as a source of something. And the source here is their pituitary. And within the pituitary, we could somehow isolate the growth hormone. Problem is, there aren't that many uh, people that have this capability, or cadavers, that is, or good cadavers. So thus, there's always going to be a limited supply of this. Though it's a pure human form of growth hormone, it's still not uh, ideal because the supply is quite limited. So now you might be saying, okay, growth hormone is not specific just to humans, right? Other things have to grow, so let's get it from an animal. Unfortunately, growth hormone is a hormone that is actually quite species-specific in the sense that if we need to diagnose and treat a hyposecretion, we need to make sure that we get growth hormone from a human. Thus, that would mean we can't 
use animal growth hormone. Okay? And I know we are animals, but I just mean non-human growth hormone in this term of animal. So it's species specific. So we have to use something from the human. So what is our option? Our option is to use a lecture from Bio1 that you cannot forget, and that is DNA technology. What can happen is um, human growth hormone, HGH, that's why we call it that, is going to actually, and it is uh, oftentimes produced by something called, and you should remember hopefully, recombinant DNA technology. And this is using our prokaryotic ancestors for a great amount of help. Essentially what we do is we have this idea of this hormone, this product that needs to be produced, and what we're going to do is we're going to utilize bacteria to do it. So essentially, I'm going to dump, I'm going to really, really make sure that this is simplified, as simple as possible. All we're going to do is we're going to insert something into a bacteria. What we essentially insert are genes that make human growth hormone. The bacteria will reproduce those genes, replicate those genes in a great amount, and we will then have the bacteria produce them with their machinery. Essentially, end all be all, what we're doing with recombinant DNA technology is using bacteria to amplify a thing that we want. Amplify what? Amplify human growth hormones so that we can treat people that have a hyposecretion of it. We can then give them growth hormone. And that's how we would treat hyposecretion of growth hormone. And it has to be during childhood in this situation, aka before puberty. So the other consequence or the other option for hormonal growth uh, a problem hormonal growth regulation problem would be not hyposecretion, it would be hypersecretion. So now we have hypersecretion of growth hormone. But I'm not going to say that it's in childhood or specifically right now. Now, because there's two situations actually. In this part, in this hypersecretion, in this overproduction of growth hormone, it can be during childhood, but it also can be during adulthood one of which is a little bit more uh, consequential than the other. So during childhood, if you have a hypersecretion of growth hormone, what's going to eventually happen is uh, something called gigantism. So this is those people that grow abnormally large, abnormally tall, abnormally big, um, but they're still going to be with relatively normal body proportions. So usually the tallest people in the world, those Guinness Book, world records people, they're usually uh, uh, people who suffer from gigantism and thus they have this great amount of height, but they still have relatively normal body proportions, okay? Now with gigantism, of course, comes other uh, problems in terms of physiological mechanisms and physiological uh, uh, overall, let's say, uh, abnormalities, but we don't need to get into those. Just know that they have normal body proportions, though they are abnormally large. Now, during adulthood, you actually get a different thing. So if you're an adult that's secreting too much growth hormone, you're going to get acromegaly. Okay, acromegaly. That's the term that would be used. This is defined as the abnormal growth in body parts. So there's going to be specific body parts that will abnormally grow, aka you're going to have bad sort of, the proportion story will not be the same anymore. You will no longer be correctly proportioned because you have abnormal growth in body parts that are particularly receptive to GH. Those body parts that have the receptors or the cells, let's say, that have the receptors for growth hormone, wherever they're located, whatever tissue that is, whatever part of the body that is, those that are particularly receptive will grow abnormally because of this hypersecretion of GH. And that covers our look at the two different forms of hormonal growth, let's say, regulatory problems, both hypo and hypersecretion. We're now going to be moving forward and looking at a different side of endocrinology, which would be the thyroid.